Okay guys, this is my uh, next step in the uh, planning my, my upcoming season is uh, deciding what, uh, what males to pair with the females, the breedable females that I've selected. Um, I've kind of, since, since my last video about this, I've kind of uh, changed my mind on some females. I've decided to give them the year off so they can uh, put on more weight and be better for next season because a lot of the females I'm breeding this year are they're virgin females so I don't want to breed them while they're small now and kind of ruin the rest of their breeding life so I've uh, decided to give about three or four females that I thought I was going to breed this year I've decided to give them the year off but um, I've got uh, my th the top three tubs in this rack are now empty um, I brought those three females over to a friend's house in town to be bred by one of his males. Um, you guys will find that out um, when I get some babies, hopefully, from from that deal. But um, I've got, so now let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten females that I'm going to be breeding this year plus the three that are at my friend's place. Um, since the uh, the toffee ball python was recently approved, I, I, was, I have a het toffee male, as you guys know, but um, I was a little bit nervous about, you know, wasting half my females on on that project. E even though I was pretty sure with, with Pete Call's candy, I, I'm obviously certain as everyone else is now that they're the exact same morph, but I was still a little nervous about pairing him up with a whole bunch of females if it wasn't proven, but now it is, so I've decided to go with um, five females for him. So I've um, chosen my five biggest females, so um, hopefully I can get plenty of eggs for that project. So that's the first one that's being bred to the toffee. Or the, the head toffee. I, I wish I had a toffee. This is the second one. You can see these are, well these are my biggest animals that I've selected. Um, let's get the stool for this one. It's kind of hard to tell. It's dark and she's in the back there. But that's another one of my biggest. Um, this girl's, out of the ones I'm reading to the toffee, she's probably the smallest, but she's uh, still pretty good size. She has, She's not a proven breeder. She's a virgin, so we'll see. Hopefully I can get some eggs out of her. And this is the last one. I think she's in shed right now. And now this is this female is 50% possible head albino. Um, I'm really only I'm really only uh, breeding to this female because she's pretty large. Um, uh, so, you know, since the toffee was proven and it came out, the babies come out looking just like a regular albino. Maybe, um, as uh, Randy Remington thinks, they could be um, on this. The, could be the two genes on the same allele. So maybe I'll get something out of that. I highly doubt it. And I really, even though I, I'm going to be producing 50% possible double heads, I don't really. I'm not. I don't want to shoot for the the albino toffee because, I you know it's like having a pastel albino. I don't think you'd really be able to tell, but you know it's ball python, so who knows? But I mainly selected that female, just um, just because she's quite large. So I just want to get as many eggs um, for this project as possible. So I'll have lots, of, hopefully, good odds and get lots of females to hold back. 
so I can uh, try and produce my own toffees uh, two or three years from now. But um, for my other pairings, I've uh, decided to double up on some males. This female is being is going to be bred to the bumblebee. Oh, there's a rat in there. I just just did some feeding uh, just uh, right before I started this video. Guess she's not interested, but I'll check back later. Um, she is. Like I said, being bred to the bumblebee and the Mojave, um, I would probably like to just have uh, bumblebees. But you know, I could get a, a multi-sired clutch. That would be that would be nice. Uh, this female is ready to kill me. Um, she's going to be bred to the bumblebee and the pinstripe. You can see I've got the little stickers there, so I can I know what uh, what I'm going to breed them to. Of course, I'll track it all on the computer as well with uh, my software. But that's just a visual reminder for me. Um, this female, I think there might be a rat in here too because she's in sheds. No, she ate it. Um, this female is going to be bred to the pinstripe and the cinnamon. And these two bottom females, I've decided they're the same. Uh, they're O sixes, but you know they've been crappy feeders, so they're still they're probably only a, about a thousand grams each. So I've decided to give them the year off. Um, this female also wants to kill me. I think this was the one. She's got some stuck shed on her. This is the only one to ever successfully bite me, so she's um, she is 50% possible head albino. I'll be breeding her to the bumblebee and to maybe um, my friend's albino male, which I have here. He's just um, he's not going to be breeding his albino male this year, so um, he's uh, lent him to me. Just it was uh, just so he'd have so he'd have more rack space um, for the three females that I brought over to him. So basically, the, his albino is just here. Uh, I'm just taking care of him, so there's room for my females. Uh, this this female is uh, the same as the one I just showed you up here. She's 50% possible head albino, um, and same same as the above one. I'll be breeding her to the bumblebee and possibly um, the albino but she is the smallest female that I'm gonna be breeding this year she's got some good size on her she's an 07 um, she's feeding great right now so hopefully I can pound a few more rats into her before she goes off feed I started to drop my temperatures so I anticipate most of them will be uh, They'll start to go off feed, but uh, that's it for right now. So that's uh, five, so ten females I'm breeding, five to the Het Toffee, uh, one to the Bumblebee and Mojave, one to the Bumblebee and Pinstripe, one to the Pinstripe and Cinnamon, and then these two to the Bumblebee and the Albino. Um, that is it. Uh, like I said, I've been starting to drop my temperatures. You can see my helix there is set up at 105, and, and don't freak out. That's uh, that's not the temperature inside the tubs. It's uh, when I set because I got back heat on these racks. I've got uh, the helix set to 105. That brings it to a, a nice 92, 93 inside the tubs. Um, and you can see I've got that wire running across there, and that goes over to the window over here, which uh, behind the blinds there is my helix night drop. And that's a little box with a photo sensor on it. That uh, that's why I have it at the window. As soon as it starts to get dark outside, the sensor picks that up and drops the temperature. I've got it set to drop down to 85. Um, I'm still for my mail racks over here. I'm still doing it manually, just by pressing the button and dropping it because I don't have another night drop. I'm I'm working on trying to get. Uh, 
get a splitter and have it have it split but uh, right now that I haven't been successful in trying that um, running over 10 minutes here so I'm trying to talk fast I've got a calendar up on the wall here which I'm tracking all my breeding on um, I've got you know dates that I'm gonna be feeding stuff uh, what the date I'm gonna start breeding stop breeding uh, start dropping temps start raising temps so that's pretty much it for what's going on here with breeding now.